we are only from the crawfish cards here. I'm going to bring you today another set of new products from the new catalogue that's been released on the 1st of September, the new holidays catalogue. Uh, this is the card we're going to be doing today and use, in, using this in making this card you will be using the new cable knit embossing folder. This is a quite thick folder. Um, there's a special way of using this but we'll get to that when, as we get up to that piece in the um, making process of the card. We're also using the Pretty Pine Needle Thinlets and we're using the Christmas Pine Stamps. So to get started we're actually going to do this beautiful cable knit uh, pattern uh, with the embossing folder. So as per normal I change the colours to so that I don't have two cards the same and I'm able to give them away. So today I'm going to be using the Elegant Eggplant and it's 11 and 3 quarters by 4 and 1 8. The Smoky Slate and that's 5 and 5 8 by 3 and 5 8. Another piece of Smoky Slate which is 2 by 4 inches. A piece of, <coughs> sorry, Wisteria Wonder, which is two inches by a quarter inch, and a piece of Perfect Plum, which is one inch by one and five eight inches. And then you're going to need also several pieces of green. I just got scraps out of my scrap bucket. Um, I used always artichoke, wild wasabi, and old olive um, to do mine. You will need to cut these two thinlets, which are out of the pine thinlets. Now there's three sizes of these pine needles. You've got a small, a medium and a large. We're just using the small and the medium. And you need to cut both of them nine times. So I've just cut... Um, them both three times out of one colour just to have a bit of variety of colour through our reef and it doesn't look so plain. Okay so I don't really have any measurements for these I just used whatever scrap greens I had available. You don't necessarily have to use the same colours as me you can use all the one colour if you wish but I liked to give it a bit of variety um, in colour. So we'll come back to that in a little bit. We also need to cut out two bows. I've already cut out the large bow, so we'll only be cutting out the small bow. So I've done the large one in the Wisteria Wonder, and I'm going to be doing the small one in the Perfect Plum. So we'll be cutting those out a little bit later, because right now we need to um, emboss this piece of smoky slate with the new embossing folder. Now when you use the new embossing folder you don't want to have this top plate on your base plate. You just need to have your base plate and one clear plate. So I'm just going to take my magnetic plate out because I tend to use that the most. It tends to live in the big shot and put that to one side. So you just need the one clear plate and the base plate to use this embossing folder. And as a tip, you also need to dampen your cardstock. So what I do is I just wipe it over with a wet one, both sides, because what it allows to happen, because this is such an intricate um, embossing folder it has can have tendencies where it may rip your cardstock so you don't want that to happen so in order for that not to happen it's best practice to dampen your 
cardstock. You don't want to saturate it, just dampen it. Some ladies like to mist it. I think sometimes I get a bit carried away with the mister, so I tend to just wipe it over with a baby wipe so that it makes it moist. And then it's just a matter of running it through the big shot. Having the cable ever which way you would like. The last time I had it running up and down the cardstock, so I thought I'd change it today and actually have it running across the cardstock. But it's just so beautiful. I don't know if you can see that on the camera, but it really does look like a knitted jumper. It's just gorgeous. So that's how we use the new thick cable knit embossing folder. Okay, so I'll just get rid of that now. And why I've got the big shot up, I will cut out the rest of those things that I need to cut out. So I'm going to return my magnetic plate to the big shot and I'm going to cut out my final two pine needles and my bow And that's all the work I need to do with the big shot today. So remember, you need to cut these two out, these two pine needles out nine times so that you end up with 18 pine needles. Okay. So with this one that I've made here, I've actually made it a sideways card and today we're actually going to be making it a long card. But the, we're doing exactly the same process. I'm just changing it up a bit so that I don't have too many of the same thing and I can gift them to people. So that's my two bows. And they're in here with the other pine needles. And I'm just going to put these away because then let's have a problem of disappearing in my workroom and then it takes me forever to find them. So I like to just put them away straight away. And we're not touching the little pine needles the littlest one, but the medium sized one is too big. So what we are doing is we're actually cutting the top two prongs off of the actual sprig of pine needles. So you're just going to cut those two off so that it shortens it to the other length of the small one. And again, I'm just going to put my thin bits away because, like I said, I have a habit of losing them. So now I have 18 individual little pine cone sprigs and two bows, one slightly darker than the other. Okay. So the next process is using this beautiful embossed cable knit smoky slate and then I just used a symmetrical object, so today I'm just going to use this glass container and I trace, oh sorry, there's something in there, and I trace a circle central to the cardstock. So I try and make sure that it's nice and central, even top and bottom. And then I just draw around that with a pencil. Just 
also I have a guideline of where I'm putting my reef. And then using my glue, I just glue a little bit of the um, circle and then I stick my sprigs on. But before I do that, I like to sort of put them in their colour so that I'm using one of each colour as I go around and that sort of makes it have a bit of variety and a bit of depth. Um, when you look at trees in Mother Nature, they're not all the same colour. So I tend to follow that pattern and have them have a bit of variety of colour through my reef. So I just want to get them all in their colour. So that I can just go one, two, three. So again, my colours that I used for my reef are wild wasabi, old olive and always artichoke. Okay, so then all I did was put a little bit of glue on that circle. And you're just working in probably a quarter circle section at a time. So then it was just placing the sprigs on there. Now the sprigs run in different directions. When you place the next one on, that one runs in the same direction. So you want one that runs opposite. And so that's what I'm doing. I'm placing the opposite one next. And just try and let it sit down in that corner. You don't want the whole thing to adhere straight away because you've got to lay them underneath each other. So it's a bit fiddly, but you will get there and it has, it has a really nice effect if you just keep on layering them all the way around your card. So I'm going to do that and then I'll come back to you when I'm finished. So once you've done that, you then want to fold. So I've now completed that and you've got your reef of ferns, um, pine needles going around. So then you want to fold your main card and use the boning tool to give it a nice crisp line. And we're going to adhere the cable knit embossed piece of smoky slate to the elegant eggplant. Making sure you put plenty of glue on this because the embossed folder has lots of raised areas and you want to make sure that it's well and truly adhered to your card. So you want to also place it the way you think it looks the nicest onto your card. Then we're going to bring over the other, put that to one side, bring over the other piece of cardstock and we're going to, <clears throat> pardon me, stamp the lovely scalloped border which is in the Christmas Pines stamp set in Elegant Eggplant onto Smoky Slate.
And then we're going to use the saying that says Season of Joy, which is also in this stamp set. So Christmas Blessings, Season of Joy, Tits a Season, um, May Your Christmas Sparkle with Joy and Happiness. And I think also may your simple joys of the season be yours all fit in this little scalloped, oh wrong colour, sorry, a bit carried away there. And we're doing that in basic grey. So basic grey for your verse. cutting around the outside edge of that beautiful scalloped border. So once I've finished cutting around this border, I will come back to you and we will proceed with finishing our card. Okay, so you want it to look something like that. And then you need to put your dimensionals on the back of this. Now, remember when you put your dimensionals on that you've got all this reef behind your um, verse so you need to put double dimensionals on the back of this to give it some height so it sits above those um, pine needles that make up the reef so when I say double dimensionals I put the dimensionals on Then I peel off the grease proof paper that, or the wax paper, and I stick another dimensional on top of that first dimensional. So that it gives you some depth. dimensional that you've just put on top of the first dimensional and we are going to fix uh, fix it to the card. I just glued one bow to the other
and then I just affixed it to the reef itself with a little bit of glue. So we just want to tuck it underneath the corner of that um, scalloped edge and maybe bring these bows up here a little bit if it does as it's told. There we go, like that. And then I just evenly spaced some of the beautiful um, bells, mini bells. Um, they're also in the new catalogue. So I just put a couple of dollops of glue <coughs> pardon me, and placed the bell on top of the glue. So I'm using silver bells today because we're using grey and purple. I don't think the red ones would go down so well. So I'm just going to use the silver ones today. So I'm just going to go ahead and do this and I'll come back to you when I have finished placing these bells. Just placing the last bell on now. I've used 12 bells. Um, you can use as little or as many as you might like, but I think that that is quite effective with just the 12. And so I hope you've enjoyed me bringing this tutorial to you. It's a very basic um, card, easy to put together. The most difficult part about it is cutting out all these little pine needles. Not that that's difficult, it's just time consuming, but it really do, is worth it at the end because you just have this lovely, uh, very effective card and you get to use a lot of your little um, bits and pieces that you've got laying around that you think that you're never going to have a use for, such as in the bow and the in the green nettles. So thank you very much.